Hello students, so in the previous class we saw some examples related to local divergence and um, that sort of gave us an idea or a motivation to define uh, or to introduce the concept of Lapunov exponents. So basically we know that um, in, in, in general in chaos theory uh, the idea is if you are um, um, I would say a little bit away from the initial condition uh, that means the two solutions which are starting in the neighborhood of the initial condition they may exponentially diverge right but um, it is um, clear that uh, it will happen that they are exponentially divergent um, but uh, it is not clear in advance that whether this uh, local divergence has to apply everywhere along the orbit or it is um, uh, just in a small uh, let us say a neighborhood. So, in that case uh, we kind of like to have an information that uh, where does this uh, local divergence uh, of the two solutions are happening and how we can uh, sort of uh, predict that or uh, we get the information about this uh, local divergence. And in that context uh, we would like to define something called Lapunov exponents which uh, actually helps us uh, to determine this uh, local divergence uh, of the uh, two solutions which are originating somewhere in the neighborhood of the initial condition. So to give you the definition, first of all uh, we would like to start with the definition. So suppose let us consider that um, uh, iteration uh, equation that we always have. So dx dt equals to f of x and you can write it as uh, xi. Uh, sorry. Um, x i plus 1 is equals to f of x i. So, this is uh, a nice uh, iteration form of that d x d t equals to f of x and uh, this is a scalar equation. So, we have considered a scalar equation, a scalar equation and call it as equation number 1. Okay. So, a small interval, a small uh, interval x0 to x0 plus epsilon having length epsilon uh, let us call it epsilon 0. So, epsilon 0 positive will be uh, contracted or stressed or stressed upon iteration iterations of course i mean if you are starting in general for uh, numerical schemes as well when you are solving as uh, let's say an algebraic equation so you start with an interval and then the solution may go outside of that interval then you are sort of approaching approaching towards the solution or you have chosen the interval so big that uh, it will the interval will slow, sort of uh, contract so that you are coming back to the um, coming back to the solution right so when you are doing the iterations, you are given this arbitrary interval that you have chosen may be stretch or may contract that is that is possible. And um, after one iteration, so for let us say after one iteration, now the width is after one iteration, one iteration, um, it is with epsilon 1 say will be approximately approximately uh, be given by be given by epsilon 1 is equals to mod of f dash x 0 into epsilon 0 right. So, this is how we are defining epsilon 1 you can put a dot here if you want the definition dot. So, let us call it as equation number 2 um, and uh, next uh, we do the i iteration. So, if we do the i iteration, so uh, by doing i, I iterations, i iterations uh, we obtain we obtain i epsilon i is equals to f dash x i minus 1 mod 
f dash x i minus 2 dot dot and so on up to f dash x 0 epsilon 0. So, basically we uh, let us call it as equation number 3 and uh, we use the notation. So, just for the convenience we use the notation we cannot write this expression again and again. So, we use the notation uh, mod of f dash x i is equals to e to the power nu i right and uh, let nu i is equals to so then we will that is uh, not let that is uh, uh, that is nu i is equals to log or ln of mod of f dash x i right. So, if uh, nu i is positive or negative the interval um, is stressed and if it is less than then it will be contracted and if it is less than then it will be contracted at the ith iteration at the ith iteration. So, basically what we will get is uh, let us go to the next page. So, at the ith iteration, so we obtain basically this limit epsilon 0 tends to 0 epsilon i by epsilon 0 is equals to exponential or e to the power summation um, summation summation j running from 0 to i minus 1 nu j right and uh, this is kind of a motivation towards uh, the Lyapunov exponent. So, what we are uh, trying to do is that we are trying to get an interval where either the interval uh, will be stressed or contracted depending upon uh, um, how uh, these uh, f dash x are uh, calculated and based on which we can introduce this limit definition. Now, from this limit definition we are going to define the Lyapunov exponent. So, definition um, the Lyapunov exponent let us call it as equation number 4. So, the Lyapunov exponent we can call it as L e lambda bar x 0 of a one dimensional one dimensional um, discrete time system discrete for the moment we are defining for the discrete for a discrete time system is the average of the nu j uh, in the limit i tends to infinity. That means uh, lambda bar of x 0 is equals to limit i tends to infinity 1 by i summation j running from 1 uh, 0 to inf 1 i minus 1 nu j right and uh, if lambda bar x 0 is positive then any interval around x 0 will be stressed in the long run and uh, if lambda bar x 0 equals to 0 then the interval length remains the same on average and if lambda bar x 0 is less than 0 the interval will shrink the interval will 
will shrink and tend to uh, tend to coincide or tend to co uh, coincide with the orbit starting at x0. That means it's sort of giving you an idea that if x0 is the let's say initial condition then how far you can go from x0 so that your solution can still remain uh, convergent right. So that Lapunov exponent um, gives you an idea that uh, whether this interval suppose you have chosen an interval around x0 which is very large and uh, um, it may be possible that the actual convergence happens on a smaller interval and the interval which you have chosen is very large. So then in that case it will shrink and uh, if lambda bar x0 is less than 0 then it will shrink and you will get that how much uh, deviation from x0 that can be allowed. If you have chosen an interval very small and if your Lapunov exponent is positive then you can go beyond a certain um, length so that uh, within that the solution can still be uh, convergent right. So this Lapunov exponent uh, sort of gives you an idea. Um, similarly if we are in a higher dimension so this is just one dimension if we are in higher dimension that means if you are dealing with a system of equations then in that case uh, the same definition can be generalized so definition uh, the Lyapunov exponent the Lyapunov exponent of higher dimensional discrete system discrete time system are defined as um, lambda bar x0 epsilon 0 is equals to limit since we have uh, more than one dimension we will not have mod but we will have norm and uh, epsilon uh, norm of epsilon 0 uh, goes to 0 uh, and then limit i tends to infinity 1 by i ln or log I think I am using log to the base e uh, norm of epsilon i by norm of epsilon 0 which is equals to um, limit i tends to infinity 1 by uh, i ln or log to the base e epsilon i right. So, this uh, this where epsilon i where epsilon i is given by epsilon i's are given by epsilon i is equals to Jacobian of x i minus 1 then Jacobian of x i minus 2 dot dot up to Jacobian of x 0 into epsilon 0. So, this Jacobian is introduced um, instead of uh, we have our usual f because uh, then we can replace the f by Jacobian by doing this linearization and from there we can define the concept of uh, Lyapunov exponents right. All right and uh, for uh, examples that we have considered so far that um, uh, Hanon map and then uh, logistic growth model then tent map, doubling map and Lorentz equation. These are the five standard examples that we are always considering. So, for them we can determine this um, uh, Lapunov exponent. So, I will talk about some examples. Uh, example 1 uh, within that example we will talk about these five sub examples. Uh, so, for the tent map for the tent map the derivative f dash x is constant in 
zero comma one, and uh, from uh, from I lost the equation number. So from this equation, yeah, from equation number two and equation number three, from equation number two and equation number three. So from equations. 2 and 3, uh, nay, not 3, uh, equation number 2 and then in my notes I have uh, the definition itself, okay. From equation number 2 and uh, equation number, let me go back, equation number 2 and equation number 4, uh, where is that? Okay, here I have not given an equation number, so let us call it as equation number 5. So, from equation number 2 and equation number 5, I would also call this as equation number 6 and 7 because we may need them. So, from equation number 2 and equation number 5, we obtain the Lyapunov exponent, we obtain the Lyapunov exponent, exponent as uh, lambda bar equals to log to the base e 2 mu where mu is the parameter in tent map right um, similarly if we talk about the doubling map for the doubling map we will again take help of equation number 2 and equation number 5 for the doubling map our lambda bar will be given by ln of 2 or log of 2 right similarly we can go to third equation the logistic map for logistic map um, uh, this Lyapunov exponent can be uh, calculated numerically right so we will we don't have any exact value here but uh, for logistic map i'm just writing for logistic map uh, logistic map has uh, for logistic map f dash has no constant derivative has no constant derivative derivative the Ly the Lyapunov exponent can only be calculated or obtained calculated numerically via direct application application of the definition 5 definition 5 right and uh, we will see that this lambda bar is varying with the value of mu rapidly i mean it, whatever mu will choose similarly lambda bar will choose will change and so on so this uh, uh, lapunov exponent in this case will be dependent on mu and uh, similarly we have a henon map and then we have uh, our uh, this uh, lorentz map where we can calculate this um, uh, the, the the value of this uh, lapunov exponent right and uh, of course it's not simple so we have to um, uh, do some uh, numerical computation to determine these uh, uh, these values because as long as f dash x is constant then it is very easy to get this uh, lapun of exponent but if it is not constant then uh, you have to do it uh, numerically uh, however it is possible to determine it right okay uh, one more thing in the same uh, motivation that uh, if the system is continuous then in that case uh, the lapunov con component uh, the lapunov exponent sorry the lapunov exponent uh, exponent of a continuous uh, time system is defined as lambda bar x0 epsilon 0 is equals to limit t tends to infinity 1 by t uh, 
ln or log to the base e norm of y where y is the solution of y dot is equals to Jacobian of xt y bar and uh, y t y at t 0 is equals to y 0. So, this y actually comes from when we do the linearization and uh, and comma this where y is the solution of this and this and x is the solution is the solution of the original original system x dot is equals to f of x x dot is equals to f of x starting at x 0. Right. So, for continuous time system, we define the Lyapunov uh, exponent uh, by this limit and uh, here we have just uh, uh, linearized the system where now the system is given in terms of uh, Jacobian and uh, this x is a solution of our original system starting from x0, right. Okay. Um, now that we have uh, defined uh, Lyapunov exponent, I would like to define uh, strange and uh, chaotic attractors. So, let us go to the next page. Um, strange and chaotic attractors, right. So, we will start with the definition, a subset, so definition, a subset x of the phase space, phase space is an attractor. of an of an ODE if what is the first criterion? So, x is invariant x is invariant that is the solutions of the ODE with initial value in x remain in x remain not remains remain in x. So, x is invariant that means solutions of the ordinary differential equation with initial condition in x right will remain in x. So, it will not leave that set. Second criteria is there exists exist a neighborhood of capital X, the basin of attractor, the basin of uh, attractor or attraction, basin of attraction um, such that there exists a neighborhood of X, the basin of attraction such that orbits starting in this basin converts to x and uh, third definition third criteria is x is connected right. So, if all these three definitions are satisfied then we call it as an attractor. So, what is the first one? The first one is that the set uh, the subset x uh, will be invariant that means the solution uh, uh, of the ordinary equation with initial value in x will remain in x. Second one is there exists a neighborhood of x such that uh, the basin of attractor such that orbit starting in this basin converts to x. 
and uh, third one is access connected. So, based on this uh, we can call it uh, a given uh, subset as an attractor and uh, the attractor is called uh, strange let me continue the definition uh, an attractor is called strange is called strange if the dimension is fractal that is non integer that is non integer so if the dimension is non integer then in that case it is called as uh, um, strange attractor right um, this uh, dimension being non integer or fractal has something to do with a uh, house of dimension right and uh, house of dimension is defined uh, um, by some uh, i mean usual definition uh, so here we are mostly uh, we will give uh, or we, uh, we will come to the uh, sort of example where we see that uh, what do you mean by the dimension being fractal and from there we'll try to see in terms of house of house of dimension that how we want to motivate motivate this concept and uh, continuation of this definition an attractor is said to be chaotic an attractor is said to be chaotic chaotic if the largest eigenvalue largest eigenvalue because chaotic if the largest eigenvalue uh, nee not eigenvalue uh, if the largest uh, uh, lyapunov exponent i was going to define the largest lyapunov exponent if the largest uh, lyapunov exponent chaotic if the largest lyapunov exponent of the solution of the solutions of the related ode is positive at nearly all points at nearly all points of x so an attractor is called chaotic if the largest lyapunov exponent of the solutions um, of the related ode is positive at nearly uh, all points of x this implies that the chaotic attractor uh, for two randomly chosen so this implies that this implies that implies that on a chaotic uh, attractor this implies that on a chaotic attractor two randomly randomly chosen orbits chosen orbits which are initially close which are initially close initially close um, will diverge exponentially will diverge exponentially uh, at as time progresses as time progresses right so these are the few definitions on attractors we'll look into some examples um, uh, in the next class and then we'll define uh, something called fractal dimension and that will be pro uh, the last definition or the topic that we'll consider in chaos theory as i said chaos theory itself is a very big topic and it is one of the vital chapters in dynamic in dynamical systems but due to the compact uh, content of this course uh, we really cannot get into the all the details of this uh, this topic but um, i tried to give some kind of feeling that what do we actually mean by chaos right um, so i'll continue this uh, uh, this um, uh, 
particular portion of this uh, course and uh, will conclude at fractal dimension as mentioned in your syllabus and uh, in the next class i'll give you some examples of uh, strange attractor or chaotic attractor and then we'll conclude the fractal dimension all right so thank you for your attention and i'll see you in the next class